Hi everybody and welcome to AP Chem Video. <sighs> kind of sad because I actually had to stop the video and start over so I hope I get it right this time. Anyway, Ms. Schneider did a spectacular job teaching you guys how to do Lewis structures. Well, I'm kind of doing the icing on the cake here which is sort of like the extra and the special things you can do. So today we're going to start by talking about resonance structures. So going back to the carbonate ion, you guys actually drew this the other day. So C in the middle, three O's, okay, two minus charge overall. Well, you know what? You got this double bond. Who's to say the double bond's here, not here, or better yet, maybe the double bond's here? Well, actually, to be totally honest, all three of these structures are exactly correct, and in fact, they can all exist at the same time. Whoa, well, that's what resonance structures are. So all of these are right, all these structures, and none of them are right. Resonance structures are created because the electrons in this double bond, they can actually move. So at any one second, they might be here, but then in another second, they might move to this location and move to this location, and they're constantly moving. So with this in mind, we would say that the carbonate ion has three resonance structures. One, two, three. Now, how can we prove that this is true? Well, we can do some bond length analysis, and this is something that scientists can actually measure and study. A little fractional information. First of all, single bonds are longer than double bonds. I hope that makes sense. When you think of a double bond, you know, think of electrons like the glue that's holding the two atoms together. So if you have double bonds, it's twice as many electrons between the two atoms. It's like twice as much glue, so you could sort of pull the atoms closer. And double bonds, not surprisingly, are longer than triple bonds. So triple bonds are very strong, and they're the shortest. Okay, well, you know what? If you actually study the carbonate ion, you would find that the CO bonds, so C bonded to O, for all three of these locations is exactly the same length. Well, that kind of proves that, you know what? There's not a double bond over here and a single bond here. Okay, that proves that these electrons are moving, so all these, um, all three bonds sort of have a little bit of double bond nature. Okay, and furthermore, if you look at the CO bond length of the carbonate, they're all the same, and they're all longer, longer than a double bond, but shorter than a single bond. So in many ways, the CO bond and the carbonate ions aren't single bonds, they're not double bonds, but they're rather what we would call a bond in a third. So, and you can't really draw resonant structures really well, so usually we just draw all three structures and say that the real structure of the carbonate ion is somewhere in, in between. The double bonds kind of move in all three locations, and it's sort of like the bond length is a bond and a third. Okay, well, let's see if you can apply this information. So draw the resonance structures for the nitrate ion. Okay, valence electrons. Five from the nitrogen, two oxygens, each at six apiece, so that's 17, plus the one additional electron from the charge is 18. So skeletal structure. So put N in the middle, O on one side, O on the other. You usually put the least electronegative one in the middle, or the one with the most lonely or unpaired electrons. So N in the middle. Okay, now I just took care of two, and then another two is four electrons, two here, two here. So now I got 14 more electrons to go. So start on the outside and place your electrons. So two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then go to the other outside oxygen, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now to get up to 18, I'll have to put the last two on the central atom. All right, well, you know what? This is not a very happy Lewis structure because the nitrogen does not have its octet full. It has two here, it has two here, that's four, five, six. So to fix that, we're gonna have to make a double bond. So we'll take an electron pair, and instead of being a lone pair, we'll move it in and have it be shared between the N and the O. Okay, so do a little redraw here. Now we got a double bond between the N and the O, single bond on the other side, and then I'm gonna place all my extra dots. Dot, 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 dot. Duck, 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 goose. Just kidding. So now I'm going to make sure that I actually accounted for all 18 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Good. Lots of times people say they're going to move these, but sometimes they end up still being there. So you always want to check your number. All right, now this is a happy Lewis structure. Everybody's octet is full. The whole thing has a minus one charge. We'll put it in brackets. Well, what would be a Lewis structure? Or sorry, what would be a resonance structure for this? Well, who's to say that the double bond is here? It could easily be on this side as well. So the Lewis, the sorry, the resonance structure would look something like this, where we moved the du double bond. All right. So there's two resonance structures for the nitrate ion. All right, can't really think of any other way to move 
that double bond, so I think that's it. Oh, I did forget my extra lone pair there. All right, so the bond length of the NO bond. So because we got the electrons from the double bond moving from here to here, to here to here, to here to here, it's only moving in two locations, so we would say that the bond length is going to, the N to the O is going to be the same length on both sides, and we would best describe it as a bond and a half. Good. So, uh, keep in mind these little notes here when you do resonance structures. Remember, you just move around the electrons. You don't actually change the positions of the elements. And finally, uh, really, you're only ever going to see resonance structures when double or triple bonds are present. If the molecule has all single bonds, then forget about it. Uh, you, there's no electrons that are going to be moving around. Good. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about here is something called formal charge. Formal charge is a lot like determining the oxidation state, okay? Um, so by definition, formal charge is the difference between the number of valence electrons on the free atom and then the number of valence electrons assigned to the atom in that particular molecule, okay? Couple rules. Lone pairs belong entirely to the atom they're connected to. If you have shared electrons, like in a bond, they will be divided equally between the two sharing atoms. Okay, totally going to see what I mean here in just a second. Uh, so here's kind of a formula version of what I just said. So number of valence electrons that would normally belong to that atom minus those that are unpaired, okay, the unshared ones, okay, and then one half the bonded since one goes to one atom, one goes to the other. All right, that, that formula is, is fine, but I tend not to use it too much. All right, so, uh-oh, ah, whew, that was weird. Okay, let's give it a go. So this is ozone. Okay, form, it's an allotrope of oxygen. Uh, let's see, so if we're going to do, I'm having some airliner problems. Curse the world. There we go. Okay, so if I'm looking at this oxygen, it has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then in this bond, it has seven electrons associated with it in this molecule. Okay, and then normally, if you look up oxygen on the periodic table, it's in family 16, it would have six. So 6 minus 7, the formal charge on this guy would be a minus 1. Okay? So oxygen normally has 6, but in this structure it kind of has like one extra one. So it's got a minus 1 overall. That's its formal charge. All right, looking at the middle oxygen. So, again, oxygen, according to the periodic table, has 6 valence electrons. But in this molecule, it's got one from this bond, one from this bond. So one from each bond. One, two, and then three, four. It owns the unshared pairs. So one, two, three, four, and then one from this bond. Five. So in this case, this oxygen actually is sort of short in electrons. So we would say it has a formal charge of a plus one. And last but not least, this guy. So six is what it would normally have. And then one, two, three, four, and then one from this bond, one from this bond. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, there you go. That would be a formal charge of zero. Okay, catching on. Let's take a look at this molecule. Uh, another rule is that the formal charge for all the individual elements in a molecule have to add up to the overall charge. Okay, so let's look at carbon first. According to the periodic table, carbon has val four valence electrons in this molecule. It's got one from this bond, one from this bond, one from this bond, one from this bond, and that is four, so oxygen has a formal charge of zero. Uh, this oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven into this molecule and it's supposed to have six so it's kind of like it has an extra one in this molecule so a minus one um, this oxygen has the exact same scenario as this oxygen so it's also going to have a formal charge of minus one and then this guy one two three four and then one from each bond bond five six oxygen has six according to the periodic table and it has six in this molecule so a formal charge is zero all right so you got a minus one on this oxygen a minus one on this oxygen added together it equals the overall charge okay so that's pretty easy so why do we care about formal charges? Well, sometimes there's different structures possible, and you can use formal charge arguments to decide which one would be more favorable. A couple guiding principles. Lewis structures with large formal charges are typically less stable or less favorable than if you can have low formal charges. So like plus threes and plus twos are kind of bad, but plus ones and zeros especially are good. Uh, this is an important one too. Having the negative formal charge on the atom that wants electrons is favorable. So for instance, fluorine, if it had a positive formal charge, that would be very unstable because fluorine 
hates missing electrons. Okay, it likes to have a negative charge. Okay, so we'll see how that works in just a minute. So it says draw two possible Lewis structures for a molecule containing N, C, and H. All right, well, five valence electrons, four and one is a total of 10 valence electrons. Uh, now there's basically two skeletal structures. You could put the N in the middle and the H and the C on either side, or you could put the C in the middle and then the N and the H on either side. So, you know, which one of these is better? Well, first of all, let's make some good Lewis structures. So in this one, we got one, two, three, four electrons connecting the atoms. Now we'll get the rest of the 10. So one, two, three, four, I'm going to start on the outside. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now we got to make it fulfill the octet rule. Well, nitrogen's sitting here with only two, three, four electrons around it, so we need to get it up to eight. So we're going to go ahead and make a double bond, and then in fact, we're going to have to make a triple bond in order to get it up to uh, the happy octet of eight. So that means we got triple bond, triple, 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 triple bond, okay, between the N and the C. And then don't forget this lone pair that's still just sort of hanging out. All right, so that's one possible structure. Uh, let's do a little formal charge analysis. That the nitrogen, um, nitrogen according to the periodic table has five valence electrons, but in this structure, it's got one here, one here, one here, and one here, so that's minus four. Okay, so that would be a plus one on the nitrogen. And then the carbon, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It's supposed to have four according to the periodic table, but in this structure it has five. So it's kind of got an extra electron, so it's a minus one formal charge. Hydrogen, well, heck, hydrogen has one valence electron, and it has one from this shared bond, so it's got a formal charge of zero. All right, fine. So let's see what's going on on the other side. Uh, again, um, we got our H bonded to C, bonded to N. That's four electrons. So now i got to put in the rest of them. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now the C only has two, three, four around it, so we're going to have to make a double bond and a triple bond, just like we did in the last example. Okay, so now you got C, and by the way, as you can see, I had to give up on my airliner, so I'm just using the mouse. It's a little bit awkward, but we're making it work. There's our structure. All right, so now we look and we say, okay, formal charges. Uh, carbon's supposed to have four according to the periodic table, and here it has one, two, three, four. So my four minus four, formal charge, zero on the carbon. Nitrogen, supposed to have five according to the periodic table, one, two, three, four, five, and it has five. So zero on the formal charge. All right, so now the big question is, which one of these do we like better? They're both happy structures, they both fulfill the octet rule. But this one has a plus one on the nitrogen and a minus one on the carbon, and this one has zeros. So this rule says, huh, low formal charge is good. So that makes me lean towards this one. Zeros and zeros are better than plus one, minus one. Okay, furthermore, here's another one. Who's more electronegative between nitrogen and carbon? So you look on the periodic table, and nitrogen is further to the right. It's further to the noble gases. It wants to gain electrons. You know, and carbon is a little less electronegative, so, hmm. Having carbon have the negative charge, that's like saying carbon's the one having the extra electrons and nitrogen's giving them up? I don't think so. Okay, so they this is not favorable. Okay, you would want, if, any, if you're going to have a minus one and a plus one, you'd want them flipped. Okay, the negative one on the element that wants electrons more, more electronegative. So I would say for both those reasons, this is a much better structure. This one, not so good. So uh, that's basically how you could use formal charge arguments to decide which structure is better. All right, we're going to do this benzene problem in class, so you are good to go. If I can just figure out how to push stop. You guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening.